Shalom and welcome to this week's Bible study. This week we'll be studying about how to endure persecution. And uh, before we get started, we'll go ahead and sing our song. And today we will be singing uh, Wherever He Leads I'll Go. So I'll go ahead and bring that up now. Okay, and so today we will be studying about how to endure persecution. So before we get started, we'll go ahead and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and for your word and all your blessings. We pray that your blessings today help us to study your word and learn it. And we pray that you'll give us boldness to serve you and to do right no matter what. In Christ Jesus' name, amen. 
Okay, and so today um, we'll be studying about how to endure persecution. Uh, first of all, the Bible says that all who live for Christ are persecuted in some way. Second Timothy 3.12 says, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. John 15.20 says, Remember the word that I said unto you, The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my sayings, they will keep yours also. Now, why do people persecute Christians? People persecute us because we do not participate with them in doing things that God says are wrong. 1 Peter 4.4 4 says, Wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of riot speaking evil of you. Also because we reprove evil works. Ephesians 5.11 it says, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. So the sinful, the evil people in the world, they don't like us. The only people, they don't like Christians because we don't go and do the bad things that they do and we live strict holy lives and we will tell them that they are wrong for doing those things and we'll, uh, you know, tell them that if they don't repent and get saved then they will go to hell for all eternity. They don't like to hear that, so they persecute us, they try to get rid of us. Um, now, there are different levels of persecution. And, uh, you know, like I said before, everyone who lives godly in Christ suffers persecution, but some suffer more than others. This is dependent largely upon where a person lives. Many Christians in other countries, such as North Korea, Iran, China, and many others, face very harsh persecution by their governments. They are co constantly imprisoned, tortured, and killed for their faith in Christ. Here in America, we enjoy religious freedom from our government. Therefore, we do not have to face being imprisoned, tortured, or killed by our government for being Christians. However, we still suffer some persecution from friends, family, co-workers, and others for trying our best to please God in all things that we do. When a person gets saved, their friends and family may turn away from them because the same person will no longer drink, do drugs, swell, tell dirty jokes, or participate in other activities with them anymore because those activities will displease God. And, uh, you know, many of those things a true Christian cannot even do. The Holy Spirit won't let them do them. And, you know, in uh, recent years, employees and business owners have fallen under persecution for refusing to participate in homosexual marriages. And this fight has now largely been won because the Supreme Court has held, upheld our uh, Constitution. And uh, the Bible speaks against homosexual marriages in Romans chapter 1, verses 24 through 32. And you can look that up if you'd like to. And uh, Jesus sends us as sheep among wolves. Matthew ten sixteen says, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Now, we become wise as serpents by studying God's word. Wolves will try to twist the meaning of God's word and confuse us. Therefore, we must diligently study God's word in order to combat the twisted arguments. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, sometimes wolves will try to look like sheep and even secure for themselves a job as a pastor of a church, but they are only in it for power or money. They are corrupt. They abuse those sheep and lead them to destruction. You must always remember that the you know when the scandals come out and all this about these preachers, Always remember, those preachers are wolves in sheep's clothing. They're not truly saved people. Truly saved people cannot do those things. And uh, we must diligently study the word of God so that we can recognize these wolves in sheep's clothing and get away from them. Jude 1, 3 through 4 says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this commendation, ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Timothy 3, 5 through 6 says, Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive uh, silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts. The word houses here is speaking of houses of worship, i.e. churches. 
Uh, this is specifically speaking of the wolves in sheep's clothing who get jobs as pastors or teachers in churches. And, you know, it says they have a form of godliness. That means they look like a Christian. Uh, they claim to be a Christian. But then they deny the power of God by, and one of the most common ones I see in the Baptist church is that they, uh, at least in the South, is the thing where they deny the power of God to give people power over sin. They, you know, they, they, they say you have to constantly struggle against really bad sins that the Bible says a saved person can't even do, like um, the immoral sins. And uh, that is, these people are denying the power of God. They're not truly saved. Because when you truly get saved, God delivers you from all of that, and you can't fall into those things. And um, if you start going to a church and discover that the pastor or Sunday school teacher is a wolf in sheep's clothing, you need to just quietly leave and find another church. Wolves are dangerous, not only spiritually, but they can be physically dangerous as well. Uh, you know, we must be harmless as doves by showing our persecutors love and not hate. Matthew 5.44 <coughs> uh, says, um, But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Proverbs 25.21-22 uh, says, If thine enemy be hungry, give him bread to eat. And if he be thirsty, give him water to drink. For thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head, and the Lord shall reward thee. So, you know, whenever we are persecuted, we love our enemies and we do good with to them. And blessing them means that, you know, it's like it says in Proverbs 25 that uh, if we say that they are hungry, then we give them food. Or if they're thirsty, we give them water. If we see them in need, we help them. That's us blessing them. It doesn't. Jesus did not say that pray, say to pray that God blesses them. He said that we should bless them. So that's a very important distinction. Um, you don't want to pray God's blessings down on evil people, okay? So, it's not that we pray that God blesses them. We need to pray that they get saved, um, but not that God blesses them. Um, Jesus said that we ought to bless them, and that means we help them in time of need. And that heaps coals of fire on their head, meaning that they're going to feel bad for persecuting us when we're being nice to them, um... And then God will reward us, and, and hopefully they'll end up getting saved through our witness. And um, now another very important thing, and this is why Christians need to understand and study and know the liberties and freedoms that we have in America um, and, and what laws we have, because we are allowed to use the laws of our country to protect ourselves. Paul did this in the Bible all the time. Um, and Acts 22, 25-29 says, And as they bound him with thongs, Paul said unto the centurion that stood by, Is it lawful for you to scourge a man that is a Roman and uncondemned? And when the centurion heard that, he went and told the chief captain, saying, Take heed what thou doest, for this man is a Roman. Then the chief captain came and said unto him, Tell me, art thou a Roman? He said, Yea, and the chief captain answered, With a great sum obtained I this freedom. And Paul said, But I was free born. Then straightway they departed from him, which should have examined him, and the chief captain also was afraid, after he knew that he was a Roman, and because he had bound him. See, in that time, Rome uh, ruled the world, and not everybody was Roman citizens. Um, they weren't, they, there was a different status with the law if he was a Roman. Um, Paul was a Roman. Someone, you know, somehow he was a Roman citizen. He was born as a Roman citizen. So as the chief captain had said that he paid a bunch of money to become a Roman citizen. So apparently some, either Paul's dad or grandfather or somebody had paid money like that or done something to become a Roman citizen and then it extended to their descendants and Paul was actually born a Roman citizen. Uh, as far as we know in the Bible, Jesus was not a Roman citizen because they were able to just whip him without being condemned and all that. 
Um, but Paul was an actual Roman citizen and he used his legal status to uh, help him against his persecutors. You know, at this point, he was not whipped. Um, he uses legal status to be able to appeal to Caesar. You know, uh, if he wasn't a Roman citizen, you couldn't do those things. Um, so it was a legal status, and uh, it's very important to understand legal status. Um, and then uh, the Bible, you know, will also command it in the Bible that we are to fear God and not men. Matthew ten twenty eight. Jesus said, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both body and soul in hell. So, you know, we don't need to be afraid of people because all they can do is kill the body. But God is able to, you know, kill both body and soul in hell. And, you know, he's he's all powerful. Um, and we, we should feel God and not man. And then Acts 5.29 says, Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than man. Yes, the Bible says we ought to obey our government and our authorities. But when they contradict, them, when they want us to do something or that's against the Bible or not do something that the Bible says that we are supposed to do, then we have to obey God and suffer the persecution and not obey those uh, laws and rules. And um, then when we suffer persecution, we must remember that all life is not our own. We are owned by God and we are his servants and um, you know, uh, we all, uh, we are his servants and, and all life belongs to him, not ourselves. Uh, first Corinthians six nineteen through 20 says, what know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God and ye are not your own for you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. And then Philippians one twenty one says, For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Because, hey, if we die, it doesn't really hurt us anything if they persecute us and kill us because we just go to heaven. So it doesn't hurt us a bit. They're, doing, they're, they're almost doing us a favor. So, <laughs> um, we, get, we get retirement then. And then uh, Colossians 3.3 3 says, For ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ and God. So our whole life is supposed to be all about serving God because he bought us and we are his servants. And when we are persecuted, we just have to put our life in God's hands. And God will, uh, God's not going to allow anything to happen to us that is not his will. And if it is his will, then he will get the glory from it. And we are his instruments and his vessels to be able to bring glory to him. And if he can get glory in us by living, then he will let us live. If he can get glory in us by dying, then he will let us die. But we are not going to die until he wants us to. Um, also, those who are faithful unto death receive the crown of life. Revelation 2.10 says, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and you shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. So if you're faithful to death, you know, you get rewarded in heaven for it. And and we should not be afraid of persecution. We should have boldness and go serve God. And because we know that God is going to take care of us. And God is going to end up avenging us um, when he comes back. And it, it also says that if we endure persecution, we obtain a better resurrection. Bible says in uh, Hebrews 11.35b, uh, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. So those who are persecuted for Christ and killed for Christ do receive a better resurrection than those who are not killed for Christ. Now also, when persecuted, remember nothing can separate you from God's love, and you are more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. Even if we die, our testimony lives on and it inspires others, and we conquer we continue to conquer evil through the legacy and the testimony that we leave behind. Romans 8, 35 30, uh, through 39 says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? 
Should tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, um, I was really shocked. I was reading a book called The Short History of the Baptist, and one of the first things it had in it was a story of some Baptists back in, I don't know, about, I think it was uh, 1400s or something. It was way back there. Um, and uh, they were kicked out of society and uh, the government in England, they were kicked out of society and the government said that nobody could help them or they'd get in trouble. And so they were thrown out in the wilderness and uh, they couldn't get food or anything and they ended up dying from starvation and exposure. You know, I was raised a spoiled American Baptist. Always taught that uh, if you uh, serve God and are faithful to him, you'll never go hungry. And he'll always meet your needs. And when I read that, I had, I had a little, you know, it took me, I had to stop reading. I had to just sit and think and, and pray for a few days. And I'm going, but God, I thought your word said, you know, that you would supply all of our needs. And, you know, these were Baptists, these people, you know, and they were, they, you let them starve to death. You know, and I had a little bit of a problem with that. And I come to find out. I started looking, I said, where does your word say that we could starve to death, that you would allow Christians to starve to death because of persecution? Because I hadn't found that in the Bible. I'd never been taught that. And uh, I started searching the scripture, and I found this in Romans 8, 35 to 39. It says in this list, it says persecution, and then it says famine and nakedness. Okay, that's absolute poverty. As I said, you know, American Christians think that, and it, you know, that if you're right with God, then, then you're going to be prosperous, and God's going to meet your needs, and you definitely aren't going to end up starving to death and 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 in nakedness and and in just absolute dark, poor poverty. But that's what it was saying here that God would allow that to happen from persecution. Um, which is what happened to those Baptists. And when I saw, when I read that, I was like, I can't believe I was taught something else wrong. I mean, I, the more I study the Bible, and the more I read, the more I find that I was taught wrong growing up as a Baptist. There's, there's so many things that they taught us wrong. And, you know, yes, the book of Proverbs and, and the other verses in the Bible in the book of Philippians, where it says that God would supply all needs, and if you walk hard, you, uh, you'll have plenty of food and all that. That is, generally speaking, in general everyday life, that does not factor in persecution. Because of persecution, godly, holy people can end up being absolutely po impoverished with no food and no clothes, and they can actually die from uh, starvation and exposure because of persecution. And God allows that because uh, he gets, you know, it shows their faithfulness, he gets glory out of it, and some people end up seeing their faithfulness and getting saved, and so it uh, it gets more people saved. And, um, and it inspires other Christians like me down through the ages to stay right with God and endure no matter what. Um, and, you know, and you have to look at it like, well, God did supply their needs. They died and went to heaven and they're not hungry no more. Um, so you have to look at it that way. Um, but, yeah, Christians can suffer and die, you know, like that uh, from persecution. Um, and um, so now also, you know, uh, Peter, you know, he denied Christ, 
And there's been other people throughout history who have denied Christ in order to avoid persecution. And Peter, you have to remember that Peter is the first one who denied Christ. And I was studying the Bible one day and found that Peter gave us instruction in the Bible on how to make sure we do not deny Christ. We don't make his mistake. Um, and First Peter 4, 1 says, uh, yeah, Peter said in First Peter 4, 1 says, For as much then as Christ hath suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind, for he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. First Peter 4, 1 was written by the Apostle Peter, the disciple who denied Jesus at his crucifixion. Here Peter is telling us how to avoid making his mistake. We must arm or train our minds to stand for Christ no matter what. It's kind of, you just have to get your mindset and you just have to just make the commitment that you are not going to deny Christ. You're not going to compromise on the word of God no matter what happens. And you have to be steadfast in that. Kind of like the training that um, soldiers go through in order to uh, uh, not divulge, you know, not to commit treason and divulge secrets if they're captured by the enemy. It's that same kind of thing because we are in a war. It's, it, you know, we're in a spiritual war. We're in a war and um, when being persecuted and stuff, we have to have that same kind of mind. And the one the thing the Bible says to endure holiness as a good soldier in um, 2 Timothy 2 3, uh, it says, Thou therefore endure holiness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You know, and soldiers are trained to endure torture and die for their country. If they are captured by the enemy, Christians have to own their own minds and get them, get their mindset in that same mindset that. We also would be willing to suffer anything and not deny Christ. Um, so, uh, I've got a reference here. It um, says, we must train our minds the same way to suffer and die for Christ in our heavenly country. Uh, Hebrews eleven sixteen. you know, if we ever need to. In the Hebrews eleven sixteen, it says that we seek for a uh, heavenly country, with the, you know, which is heaven. And, um... The Bible says in Proverbs 23, 7a, it does say, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. So if we get it settled into our minds that we are not going to deny Christ, then, you know, we're not going to. Um, because how we think is how we will be. And, um, you know, and so we can know that we would endure persecution. I've heard people say, well... Uh, I hope I die with Christ, but I don't know. No, you can know it if you train your mind to endure persecution. You make that commitment. You know, the Bible shows that we can know that we will endure it. We're not going, we can know that we won't deny Christ. Um, the Bible also says that we must be willing to die for other Christians, not just for Christ. First uh, John 3.16 says, Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. So, and, you know, even Jesus said that he that if you do something bad to a Christian, then you do something bad to Christ. So if you betray another Christian, you are betraying Christ. So that's a very grave thing. Uh, Matthew twenty five forty says, And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Before the apostle Paul got saved, his name was Saul, and he persecuted Christians. When Jesus appealed to him, he asked Saul why he was persecuting him. Uh, Acts 9, 1 through 5a says, And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven, and he fell to the earth, and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. The Bible makes it very plain that what someone does to a Christian, they also do to Christ. 
Now, many Christians have suffered torture and death because they would not betray other Christians. And, you know, that that's one thing that amazed me as I started uh, studying about the modern-day prosecutions, especially what happened in the Soviet Union. A lot of times the Christians were not killed and tortured for, deni- for not willing to deny Christ. They were tortured and killed because they wouldn't be, they wouldn't give a list of names of who else was in the church, and they wouldn't say who the pastor was, and the pastors wouldn't say who the congregation was. That was one of the that was one of the more common things because um, uh, it appeared to me that under communism they had a state church, so just to believe in Jesus was not really the the thing that they were against. It was the it was having church services that were not controlled, you know, by the government. Um, and, uh, and so, and of course the government was atheist, so they were really hindering what you, what people could preach and all that. And, um, and the, the same way in China, um, you know, they, they can, it's not, the biggest problem is not that they believe in Jesus, is that they, witness to other people is that they hold church services that are not government sanctioned. Um, they, they, they teach things that the government doesn't like. So those, that's what they're persecuted for. It's not basic. It's not anymore. A lot of times to where, you know, just deny, you know, what they're saying, deny Christ or die. Now it is that way. A lot of times in like Iran and a lot of the Muslim countries are still that way. Um, but in some places, it's more of uh, the idea of trying to share your belief with others or live out your faith. They, they want faith to be a personal, close thing. And we see that trying to come up in America a lot. And, um, and we have to fight against that constantly. Um, and uh, in the book and movie, Tortured for Christ... Richard Rumbrand, who was imprisoned in Romania under the Soviet Union for being a pastor of a church that was not government sanctioned, um, he tells us how he and other Christians were imprisoned and tortured in the Soviet Union for being Christians and because the churches were not registered with the government and they were preaching things that the government didn't like, even though it was the truth of God's word. Um, and uh, their government told them that if they would betray other Christians to them, they would receive special favors, but if not, they would be tortured worse. Richard Rumbrand and many others suffered unspeakable tortures, and some died because they had on their minds not to betray their brothers and sisters in Christ. This is one reason why God commands us to always treat other Christians kindly. See First Peter 4, 8, and Romans twelve ten. Someday, other Christians may have to die for us. And if we have treated them badly, it could cause them to sin and betray us and Christ. So, you know, Christians need to love each other and treat each other properly so that if that kind of persecution arises, you know, we'd be willing to die for each other and um, and we wouldn't be tempted to betray Christ because we don't like another Christian. <laughs> um, and... Uh, and if you find yourself or well, you're persecuted and um, you find yourself in that situation, you don't like the other Christian, just remember, well, I can't betray them because I'd be betraying Christ and I can't betray Christ. So then you just focus on Christ and not the other person. Um, and also, you know, I encourage you to read the book and watch the movie Torture for Christ because it is one of them that will strengthen your faith and will change your life. Um, the you know, when you watch the movies about Christian persecution, it helps you, it inspires you to become stronger, and it makes it easier for you to arm your mind that you too would be faithful to Christ no matter what, even death. And another thing is it's not just, well, we have to arm our minds to allow ourselves to die for Christ, or arm our minds to where we would die for other Christians. We also have to be willing to let others Die for Christ because Jesus said that if someone, if you love anyone else above him, then you're not worthy of him. So uh, Matthew ten thirty seven says, He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. 
And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Jesus took the closest family relationships and said, if you love them more than me, then you're not worthy of me. And, you know, and there's some really evil people out there in the world who persecute Christians and they will take the, they will kill the children. They will torture the children. They will torture, uh, you know, family members in order to try to get someone to deny, denounce Christ or to give information about other Christians. And we just have to make the commitment that we love Christ above all else. We have to make that commitment. Um, and, you know, many Christians have had to watch their children and other loved ones be tortured and killed because they themselves would not deny Christ or betray other Christians. Again, in the book and movie, uh, the book and movie, uh, Torture for Christ, Richard Rumburn tells of another man whose son, about 12 years old, was tortured to death in front of him to try to get the man to betray other Christians. As the son was being tortured, the man started to become weak and was going to give the government the names of the other Christians. But the boy encouraged his father and begged him not to betray them. The father did not betray the other Christians and the child died. That was, you know, that was a really sad thing. And But the child actually had the strength to help his father. And, you know, children are innocent. They're not held accountable to God until they're 18 years old. This was this boy was 12 years old. He himself was not held accountable to God. But children, you know, when they get saved and the Holy Spirit comes into them, they are so tender and haunted that God can really use them and they can many times that be much more bold and have much more strength and endure a lot more than many adults can. And, um, you know, this is the reality of true Christianity. Christ died for us and we must be willing to suffer the loss of all things and die for him and other Christians if we are ever faced with that. Now, in America, we are very blessed. We have never had to face this level of persecution yet, but it could happen. Uh, you know, it is happening right now in other places of the world like North Korea, Nigeria, Iran, China, and most recently the Philippines. You know, over North Korea, you know, I don't years ago that they just, they found a house church, they just bust in and machine gun everybody in there. I mean, North Korea is really bad. Um, and, uh, you know, Nigeria, the Muslims have been, like, burning down whole villages and killing whole villages of Christians in Nigeria. Um, you know, these places, you know, they are, they're just, these people are very evil people. They need to get saved and they hate Christians and, um, they go off and just start killing them all. Um, and we have to pray that they will, God will touch their heart and they'll get saved and stop persecuting Christians and pray for the Christians that God will give them strength to endure. Now, it's very important to endure persecution because a person who does not endure persecution proves that they have never actually made a true commitment to Christ and become saved. Matthew thirteen twenty through 21 says, But he that received the seed into stony places, the same as he that heareth the word of God, and anon with joy receiveth it, Yet hath he not root in himself, but doeth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the world, by and by he is offended. Okay? So, someone who denies Christ has never made that true commitment to Christ and has never, has never been truly saved. Now, this is the parable. This here was in the parable of the soul, in which I preached on that, um, a few weeks back, and I explained in there how, you know, just because someone believes, there's different levels of belief. And just because somebody believes the facts about Jesus doesn't mean that God has committed himself to them. As they all said, because God knows the hearts, you have to have the, you have to receive the gospel in a pure and good heart and totally surrender and make that total commitment to Christ. And then, the Holy Spirit will not allow you to uh, deny Christ. And um, then, and I explained in that how that um, some people, uh, you know, they they go through tribulation and persecution and they die for him. And um, the book of Revelation shows that after they die, God leads them to fountains of living water. So they 
it's kind of like the um it's like the Coptic Christians over in Egypt that's being killed for their faith right now. They don't explain a pure gospel. They've got some other things that they add to salvation. And so they don't quite understand everything. And they're not, you know, they're, they're not truly saved. But they do endure. They are strong enough to where they endure the persecution. So after death, because they died for Christ, because it promises he that endureth to the end shall be saved. So after death, and the book of Revelation says that the souls were under the altar, and it talks about them, and it says that Jesus would lead them to fountains of living water. Living water is salvation. So they made that, they're basically saved at death because they made the ultimate sacrifice of their own lives for Christ. Um, And that is all explained um, in the parable of the soul uh, video, and I'll put a uh, link to that um, at the end of this video here, and um, the and the Bible does say that Christ will deny those who deny Him. If Christ denies you, then you're not saved. Second um, Timothy two twelve. If we suffer, we shall also reign with Him. If we deny Him, He also will deny us. Matthew ten thirty. Because when Peter denied Christ, he wasn't saved yet. It was before Jesus's crucifixion. Okay, he didn't have the Holy Spirit living in him yet. He wasn't saved yet because salvation is the Holy Spirit indwelling a person. So when Peter denied Christ, he wasn't saved yet. He wasn't dwelt with the Holy Spirit yet. The Holy Spirit hadn't come yet. Um, and so that's why he was, he fell and denied Christ. He wasn't strong enough. Um, some people are really strong, you know, and they can endure to the end. And then they're saved at death. Um, And, you know, the Bible plainly says that people are killed for Christ. And then afterwards, Jesus leads them to living waters. Uh, We just found that in the Bible a few weeks ago. Um, And the Bible does say that he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Um, So you can know that you're truly endured with the Holy Spirit and saved in this life. Um... If you've truly repented of your sins and you're truly trying to serve him and please him, and I explain that in, you know, if you look at the video, how to get to heaven, since a saved person cannot uh, do, and then the parable of the soul, those three videos ex- explain all that in great detail. Um, and then, you know, as I was talking about before, you know, I've heard Christians and even pastors say, well, I don't know for sure if I would deny Christ or not, if I wouldn't deny him, and, you, and nobody can know that, and we just can't know that. You know, don't ever let anyone tell you that you cannot know for sure if you would be able to endure certain kinds of persecution or not until you are faced with it, because that is a lie from hell to try to cause you to deny Christ. You know, as shown above, if, you know, if we, as I said before, if we train our minds to endure persecution, the Bible says that we can know that we will endure, and if we're truly saved and we have the Holy Spirit in us, and we've truly made that commitment to Christ that we will live for him and die for him, then we can know that, you know, we're not going to uh, deny him. You know, we're not we're not going to fall like that. And, um, you know, it is not prideful to say that you would die and suffer anything for Christ. It is obedience to the word of God. And don't ever let any wolf in sheep's clothing standing behind a pulpit ever tell you any different. They are setting you up for a fall and trying to take around your take away your kind of life. And, you know, if, if, if it's really dangerous for the people who have the head knowledge and they believe and, and they're enduring for a while, but then they could fall away. It's really dangerous to that it would cause them to fall away and not endure to the end. And then they would lose their soul in hell. Um, and then uh, Revelation 3.11 says, Behold, I come quickly, hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. You know, we must arm our minds and decide that we will always obey God no matter what happens. Um, now, uh, I'll put I'll put a list of things in the, um, I won't be able to put all these videos at the end of the video, uh, because there's too many of them, but there's a list of resources here that I will put, uh, at the, in the description of the video. Um, and just some tips that I'll put down there. Uh, here's a list of things that you can do to help arm your mind. That, um, you will serve God no matter what. 
You know, read the book of Daniel. Daniel was thrown in a lion's den. Um, and, 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 you know, the lions didn't attack him. Uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown in a fiery furnace for not worshiping an idol. The fire didn't touch them. They were delivered. Um, so also, you know, read the book of Acts. There's a lot of persecutions in there. Uh, Stephen was, uh, killed for his faith. And Jesus, when he looked up, he saw Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father to receive him. And then also uh, study the Apostle Paul's life. He was persecuted terribly. I mean, he was whipped and beaten. And he didn't always use the law to protect himself. But sometimes he did. Um, and, uh, you know, go, you know, you study Paul's writings and about his life. Um, also, there's many free movies uh, on Christian persecution that you can watch. Um, there's uh, one about William Tyndale who uh, was one of the first people to translate the Bible into English, and he died for Christ. That movie's on YouTube, uh, and I'll put the link to that in the description. There's another movie about John Huss. Um, he uh, took a stand for Christ and was martyred, uh, and I think he translated the Bible too. I'm not sure. Um, that one's also on YouTube. Um, you can also watch a free video about John Bunyan, he was persecuted for Christ. That's on YouTube. There's a free video about the King James Bible and how it came into existence. And many people were persecuted and died for making the King James Bible. And that's on YouTube. Uh, you can read uh, Fox's Book of Martyrs. Tells of many who have died for Christ. And it's available free online to read. And I'll put that link in the description. Um, you can learn about Christians who are being persecuted today by going to aclj.org, Persecuted Church, and uh, persecution.com, which is Voice of the Martyrs. And I'll put those links in the description. You can also read the book, Tortured for Christ. You'll probably have to buy that um, on Amazon or something. I haven't found it for you online. And then the movie, Tortured for Christ, uh, I've never found that for you online either. So uh, you'll need to probably buy that off of Amazon. Or in a Christian bookstore somewhere. But, you know, if you study the persecuted church and you study the history of the persecutions, plus you get involved in helping the persecuted church today through the voice of the martyrs, um, you will, this will help you to become a stronger Christian and stronger in your faith and more determined to live for Christ no matter what. And, um, so I will put all that information in the uh, description and you can click on those links and watch those movies and stuff. Now, uh, all of those movies, I do believe I actually have in uh, some different playlists that I've just like created. They're like other people's videos. I've just like linked to them on my channel. Um, so if you go through the different playlists under the Christian movies and stuff, um, you can find those two but I'll put the links in the description here so you have easy access to them but you know just remember um we are uh you know the, those evil people in the world who hate Christians and they want they want us all dead and they want to persecute us um and we have to uh arm our minds that we are going to serve God no matter what you know I myself have been persecuted even to death um I was uh poisoned uh twice for being a strong christian um and suffered 15 years uh with sickness and illness because of that and then god healed me about a year and a half ago and um you know and and i live in america it wasn't government persecution it was just a group of people who didn't like me i think they're probably some kind of cult or something and they keep you know uh you know if i try to walk outside the home they you know they show up and then I they end up poisoning my food again and I've also been almost kidnapped in the last five years so I think they're behind that and we've had some thing incidents here at the house we had um a uh, dead squirrel ended up in the driveway and it looked like it was like cut up and cut open and stuff and um it looked like it was killed ritualistically um, it was not something that animal did, and it looked like it was 
a ritualistic thing, uh, possibly Satanist or something. So apparently the group of people that are after me, I got somebody at my first job mad at me, and they didn't let me know it. I didn't know they was mad at me. But I apparently got somebody, somebody mad at me, and they're in the, that, you know, they're in some kind of Satanist group or something. And, um, so apparently that's who's after me. Um, and uh, so, you know, I, I live with it. Um, we've got, we're putting fences up, and we've got cameras up, and now in the last year and a half or so, it actually looks like my dad and his family is actually behind those attacks. It wasn't just that I got just somebody at work. Um, it looks like my my own family is actually behind it um, because of some things that have come out. And my grandfather, you know, what right before he died, he last one of the last things he ever said to my brother was, you're not dead yet. And we're going, well, why did you want us dead? Um, so... Uh, there's questions there um, because it never really made any sense to me. I live in America. You know, I went and got a job and I witnessed to people as a normal Christian would and I ended up getting poisoned. I just happened to get poisoned by this cultic group. It never made any sense to me that I would be attacked like that in America, but it does make more sense if my dad's family was actually behind it and it was a targeted attack, it was done by people close to me and not by strangers because the idea of a stranger just up and trying to kill someone like that in America doesn't make any sense. And it never, and I, I just never really could understand why I was that man, I must have really made somebody mad at me or something, but it makes more sense if it was actually my dad and his family who was behind it and they just put someone at work um, and to do the dirty work for him, um, because what shocked me later was, you know, after I got really sick and lost my mind and everything, my dad wanted to euthanize me because I didn't know anything, so it was like, it was, it was like he had planned it, and then also, while I was sick and dying, he tried, he actually physically attacked and tried to kill my brother, um, so, you know, uh, there's, there's evidence there. Um, so, you know, when, you know, my brother was just, in the last month we've had an attack, my brother was almost kidnapped at his leave, while leaving his job, and then uh, he was almost, and, and then a guy tried to attack him at Walmart. It was about three days later, and it was like, we had two attacks in three days. That's like the most, that's like the, I mean, it's usually we have an attack every six months or something, but they it was like they were getting more bold. And so we contacted the law. We, I mean, we, we prayed that we, we prayed God's protection on us. And we said, God, this is getting really serious now. I mean, it's two attacks in three days. They are really after us and we need you to push them back and put a hedge of protection around us. And, you know, really more than ever, stopped them and the attack stopped we haven't had any more problems um but we're putting a you know we're getting better fences around the property we got cameras around the property um and you know because as christians yes we trust god but we have the bible says jesus himself said do not tempt god so we have to do what we can to protect ourselves but still act like christians you know and and love people, but we have to we have to do what we can to protect ourselves and fences and cameras and and you know calling the law that you know that's that's how we protect ourselves. Um, but you know we just have to all our minds that all life is not our own. We belong to Christ, and Christ is not going to let anything happen to us that is not His will. And if it is His will, then who are we to say no? We, we don't, we are our own. He bought us with a price. We committed our lives to him. Well, his, there's nothing we can do about it. You know, Job said, though he slay me, yet will I serve him. If God can get more glory out of us dying, then then that's what happens. Um, you know, our life is not our own. So just remember that and um, I'll go ahead and close for today. And... Uh,
And uh, thank you so much for coming and watching this week. And I hope you'll come back next week and join us again. And so we'll now go ahead and uh, close and pray. And then I'll do the Aaronic blessing over you in Hebrew and then in English. As found in the Bible in Numbers 6, 24 through 26. Um, dear Heavenly Father, God, thank you for this day and for your word and all your blessings. We pray that you bless us and help us today and help us to stay faithful to you and committed to you and never deny you. And we pray that you bless us and uh, you uh, protect us according to your will. And uh, you will give us uh, peace in all of our tribulations and persecutions. And we'll keep our eyes on you. And uh, thank you for all your blessings on us. Christ Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Yavarakaka Adonai, Vayish, Mavaka, Yael, Adonai, Panav, Aleka, Viku, Neka. Yisa Adonai, Panav, Aleka, Vesem, Laka, Shalom. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And thank you so much for watching this week. And um, we do have the uh, links in the description. If God lays it on your heart to support our ministry uh, so that we can have more resources to reach more people for Christ, please use the Patreon or PayPal links in the description. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for um, you know liking the videos and sharing them and leaving comments. That really helps our channel. And we really appreciate all of our subscribers and followers. I hope you all have a very blessed week. Bye. Thank you.